Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice Olympiad problem from Russia. So we have x to the fourth power minus 2x cubed plus x equals 6. And we're going to be solving for x values. I think I changed the number 6 a little bit uh, to make it a little smaller. But it was the same idea. So I'll be presenting two methods. Even though one of the methods will be kind of inconclusive and there's a good reason for that we'll talk about it so first method and obviously there there is a third method which i believe is going to be using the quartic formula which is quite complicated pretty complicated way too complicated anyways if you want to look it up you can find a copy I think on Wikipedia, there's a picture that you have to kind of scroll forever to the right to be able to see the whole thing. Anyways, so I'm going to put everything on the same side. x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus x minus 6 equals 0. For these kinds of equations, especially, especially cubic and higher degrees, we want to be able to factor it because there's no general formula for quintic and higher, unfortunately, and that's very, very sad. But there's no way we can solve them in general case. There are some, you know, um, solvable quintics. There's a class, there's a group. Uh, I haven't found much information. I kind of looked it up. There are some certain forms that you can uh, solve. Uh, anyways, but pretty complicated. So for, for these kinds of equations, you want to be able to factor it. I look at the equation. There is no immediate factoring like grouping or something special like, you know, difference of two squares or something like that. But um, we, can, we can try something else. If it's not right away factorable, maybe you can use something called RRT. Are you familiar with RRT? It is the rational root theorem. Let me write it down. So the rational root theorem is actually really cool. It tells us if there are rational roots, then you look at the polynomial. If it's monic, then we're good. We can always make it monic, by the way, right? By substitution. But anyways, if there are rational roots, then they have to divide the constant term, right? So what numbers divide 6? Well, 1, obviously, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, and plus minus six. There aren't that many candidates, right? So you only have to test eight numbers. Long division, polynomial division, Excel, Wolfram Alpha, whatever you want to try. But you can quickly do this. And then at some point, hopefully one of these is going to work. Let me test x equals one. Oh, by the way, remember I keep repeating this. When one is a solution, you'll see it pretty quickly because that's going to be the sum of the coefficients being zero. In this case, I'm checking the sum of the coefficients, 1 minus 2 plus 1 minus 6. Obviously, this does not equal 0, so 1 is not a solution. With the negative 1, it is the sum of the evens equals the sum of the odds. In this case, the evens are 1 minus 6, and odds are negative 2 plus 1. Again, they are not equal either. So x equals negative 1 doesn't work either. So those two failed. How about a 2? Doesn't work. Negative 2 doesn't work. 3, have, have I tried it? Not all of them, but I, I know that this equation, unfortunately, fails the rational root theorem test, whatever you want to call it. In other words, this equation has no rational roots, and that's quite possible, especially with cortex, right? I mean, if you had a cubic, it might have an integer solution. Well, at least it has to have one real solution, by the way, right? But a cortic may not even have any real solutions. They can all be complex. Let's see what, what the case is. So, this doesn't have any rational root, like I said earlier. Too bad. Let's go with the second method. All right? Cool. Here's the second method. I'm going to rewrite my equation. I have x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus x equals 6. By the way, I, I told you I changed the number. I think the original one was 30 or something like that. I just wanted to make it uh, different or smaller. And this also tells you, the second method tells you a general way to do this. So you can change the number 6 and come up with another problem. And if you want to test your friends, colleagues, you know, classmates, don't do it to your professors. That might 
just backfire. That's not recommended at all. Okay, so now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put everything on the same side, but not use the quartic formula. Nope, nope, I'm not that crazy, right? <laughs> okay, uh, and also uh, in regards to the quartic formula, you could also write this as x squared plus ax plus b times x squared plus cx plus d, and then uh, also test out 6 and 1, 2 and 3, and negative 2 and negative 3, if it's factorable that way, right? Okay. And that's going to be a little easier than coming up with the B and D. If you just guess what B and D are, like 6 and 1, or I mean 6 and negative 1, or 3 and negative 2, just test these cases, and then hopefully one of them is going to work. That's another way to do it. I don't know if you want to call it third method, but that is an alternative. Anyway, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this in a very special form, this, because this is what I notice. I notice that x to the fourth is x squared. This is 2 times x squared times x. And this kind of tells me that this looks like a squared minus 2ab. Do you see the relationship? Yes. I want to turn this into a perfect square. And I have two pieces. I just need to add the third piece. What do you add to make this a perfect square? Think about it, right? If you think about it for a minute, and if you said b squared, you're, to you're totally right about that. Yes, you do need b squared, but what do you need here? What is b squared? What is b? b is x, so you need to add x squared. Does that make sense? But you can't just add x squared out of the blue. You also have to subtract it. Make sense? I hope it does. So we added x squared and subtracted x squared to get a perfect square, and that is just perfect. Awesome. Now, we have the following. This is a perfect square. Do you believe that? It is x squared minus x squared. And what about this? It is a minus 1 times x squared minus x. And then this is minus x, I mean minus 6 equals 0. Now, isn't this awesome? Take a look at it. Take a good look. Take a picture. This is calling for what? Substitution. So let's do it. Call this t and go for t. t squared minus t minus 6 equals 0 t minus 3 times t plus 6, I mean 2, is equal to 0. t is equal to 3, t is equal to negative 2, but t is x squared minus x. So you get two equations from here. x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. x squared minus x plus 2 equals 0. If you did the factoring like I said earlier, the method, you would find negative 3 and 2 would work. And finding a, B, finding a and b would, would not be too hard. Okay, what are the solutions from here? x equals 1 plus minus the square root of 13 over 2. And we have two complex solutions because this has a negative discriminant. And those are going to be the solutions to this equation. All right, you want to look at a graph of this? I don't know if I made one. Did I? Looks like I did. Yes. This is a quartic equation that kind of curves like that, but only to real solutions because it because it intersects the horizontal line y equals 6 at two points. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.